welcome to Wealth Well Done. Together, we'll cover a wide range of important topics surrounding money and the impact it has on our lives. From the sophisticated and highly valuable planning techniques of the ultra wealthy to the commonly underutilized biblical teachings. Together, we'll work to improve our relationship with money and our effectiveness in stewarding it well. Here's your host, Eric Scoville. Welcome to the, let's see, 40th episode of the Wealth Well Done podcast, where we lean into the tactical, practical, and spiritual advice to help you do your wealth well done. Uh, this week, I am so, so, so pleased to have my brother Nathan Rickner back here again. Um, we had him on for a couple of episodes, uh, 37 and 38, and those were powerful. Some of the most, like, most enjoyable conversations that I have had in a long time. Um, and we've received a lot of great feedback from awesome. people talking about how meaningful that awesome. was. So as we were talking on Friday, it just made all the sense in the world to get back here and do man. it again. So um, I love being with you here, Eric. Oh, this is this is good stuff, man. Um, what's great is, so Nathan and I have said hi to each other, but not much more than that. So he has no idea what we're about to talk about. Oh, no, no. <laughs> That's another chance to prep it all, but uh, um that's honestly part of where we're going with this. And so yeah. conversation one here, we're into two of them. Conversation one is partnering with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And so um, when I think of partnering with the Holy Spirit, there's some different things that come to mind, but I want to, I want to really start to mind that topic here, what that means um, to you when it comes to how do we partner with the Holy Spirit? Yeah. And so I'll start. Um, so sometimes when I go in and give a talk, uh, I, I do, not, not a business talk. When I go to the rescue industries and I go talk to these guys, I literally go in the, the three minutes before I walk in the door and just Holy Spirit, what do you want to talk about? Normally that's because I'm too busy. I'm on phone calls all the way down there. I don't give it enough time, but I've seen it work so well where I say, Holy Spirit, what do you want to talk about and take over? And sometimes I'll get something right there. Yeah. Sometimes I won't get anything. And then I'll have, yeah. I'll pick a random guy to lead in prayer and the words he says, and I'm going to say random because I just randomly choose him. But the guy, the, the what he says takes straight into the most meaningful conversation. And sometimes it's silence and I feel like I'm wandering, you know, floundering there for a while. And so I have a lot, a, a ton to grow in the area of parting with the Holy Spirit. So I want to, yeah, want to talk too. about, <laughs> I'm sure we all know, you know, especially when you get into spiritual gifts and other pieces as well. Yeah. But yeah. what does it mean to you when we say partner with the Holy Spirit? Yeah, you got big questions, bro. This is such a huge topic. I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is, <clears throat> as you talked about that, is that is a couple things that we remind ourselves the Holy Spirit is a person. Mm -hmm. He's not a force. He's not just, you know, power source for me to do the things I want to do. He does bring power, but he's a person. So it's the idea of relationship, the idea of friendship. Where does that come from, that he's a person? How do you know that? Well, the scriptures talk about, so, um, yeah, I guess we'll just go down this road then. <laughs> um, scriptures talk about, like Ephesians 4, I think it is, says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. You don't grieve a force. You grieve a person. A person has emotions, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, you go to Acts when Ananias and Sapphira are struck dead for lying. <laughs> right. Pretty intense. Uh, the Holy Spirit, or Peter says to them, how has Satan filled your heart that you, you know, you've lied to the Holy Spirit? Again, you don't lie to a force. Right. They've, they've lied to a person. So again, all through the New Testament, if you just look up references to the Holy Spirit, you'll find that he's he's feeling, he's speaking, that there are all these kinds of things attributed to the Holy Spirit in that um, they show you he's, he's not just a force. And that the story I mentioned of Peter, right after that, he says, you've not lied to men, but to God. That, again, is a clear scripture where we have the connection between the Holy Spirit 
is God. And obviously, again, God is a person. So Holy Spirit also, he's a person. Um, so yeah, anyways, yeah. that's the, that's my brief okay. answer to that question. But that's, that's the first thing I think of when we talk about partnership. And the second thing, um, is what we just mentioned is that he's God, yeah. he's Lord. So like you, when you have a business partner, you know, you guys are like, what, equal sharers usually. Sure. Um, you guys are kind of working alongside each other in that sense, almost mm-hmm. as equals. You lean on each other. Each person brings their own strengths. To the table yeah. And- yeah. Our partnership with God is not entirely like that because yes, we are, we're with him. We're with him in it fully, but he's God. He's Lord. Like he's the master. We're the servants. Right. It's, it's not this like, buddy buddy you know equals kind of relationship right um so yeah that's mm-hmm. <laughs> those are my two thoughts when you first started talking about partnership okay um, i think we got to remind ourselves of those things yeah when you so help me with this mm-hmm. when you are considering the holy spirit yeah, yeah. I, for whatever i find it so difficult to to even like conceptually think of something when I'm trying to talk to the man, the person of Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. you know, to, to Jesus, I've got all of these man-made images that we've seen of whatever our huh. version of white, black, whatever Jesus is with beautiful hair, or, you know, he's gone through crucifixion yet. He still looks like he's got makeup on his face or <laughs> you know, all, of our, all of our man-made images of Jesus. I, I at least got that. Or I, you know, watching the chosen, I can, I can hear, you know, his voice. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. to the Holy Spirit, how do you, in your mind, when you're talking mm. to the Holy Spirit, mm. do you conceptualize anything or you try to just go completely blank or what is, how do you do that? Okay. Yeah. That's an interesting question. Um, I say normally I, I would just use the descriptions given to me by the scriptures. Okay. So for instance, Acts 2, when the Holy Spirit comes what do we see? We see fire. Yeah. We see wind, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of times the activity, the Holy Spirit is connected. Uh, like when Jesus said, rivers of living water will flow out of you. I think that's John seven connects the Holy Spirit to water, living water, right? So we have these kinds of pictures that the scripture gives us of kind of maybe what he's like or what he does. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I get a solid like image because he's, he is different from Jesus in that sense, right? That Jesus is the one who became incarnate. Um, now what's interesting though about that question. So Jesus himself said in his, you know, John 14, 15, 16, 17. We've got these great chapters of scripture right before he goes to the cross. Yep. And he spends a lot of that time talking about the Holy Spirit. And he says, I think it's at the end of chapter 15 or beginning of 16, he says that the Holy Spirit will bear witness about me. Right. So when we talk about relating to the Holy Spirit and talking with him, one of the greatest things the Holy Spirit loves to talk to us about is Jesus. Mm. He, he, he bears witness to us. He, and that means to like give evidence to us. He's, he loves to tell us who Jesus is, how Jesus feels, what Jesus values. Yeah. He, he helps us understand and know Jesus more. Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm going off on just <laughs> the Holy Spirit questions because sorry, listeners, this is probably more for me than it is for you. Uh, <laughs> All right. So when, when Jesus says that, um, when he says that, you know, when, when two or three are, are gathered in your midst, you know, I'll be with you. Yeah. Is that, should we be thinking of that being Jesus with us or the Holy Spirit with us? Cause yeah. How, how do you take that? Well, I, I mean, if I took just the plain reading of the text, I, I take it as it's Jesus. Okay. Right. But you, you, we can split hairs yeah, here a little know. bit, right? Yeah. Theologically, we can if we really want to. Mm-hmm. But practically, it's almost all the same. So again, if I go back to John 14, 15, 16, and 17, 
that upper room discourse, we call it. Jesus says, and you know what? I'm just going to open to make sure I'm not uh, just giving you the Nathan Rickner translation. Um, where is it? So Jesus is talking about the helper. And in uh, 1416, he says, I will ask the father and he will give you another helper, another helper. <laughs> and that, that word, if again, somebody can check my memory on this, if I remember correctly, that word is the word for its advocate as it's translated elsewhere. The Greek word is paraclete. It's one that's called alongside another. But the reason why Jesus says another helper is because that same word is used of Jesus in 1 John 2, 1. John says this, and I'm going to, I'm turning here to it. Uh, 1 John 2, 1. He says, I'm writing to you so that you may not sin, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. So when Jesus says, I'm sending you another helper, yeah. it's the idea of, I'm sending you another who's just like me. Okay. All right. He's just like me. Yeah. And, and he's going to talk to you about me. Like, it's such a beautiful thing, right? And that's why he can say, it's better that I go away so that the Holy Spirit can come because right now on earth with his disciples, he's limited to this human body. Right. And yet when he goes away, he gets to be with us. He, Jesus is with us by and through the Holy Spirit everywhere we go. We, we have full access to him. We, we literally, we have him with us in a way like none of the Old Testament saints ever got to experience. All right. It is incredible. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, so, so rolling off that, thank you for that. That's helpful to me as I continue to seek out that relationship with the Holy Spirit more. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> partnering with the Holy Spirit, where does this, where should this apply? And, and so I think that there is, there's an obvious answer that's like, well, everywhere, but I want to, yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I was going to say. <laughs> I want to lean in a little bit more into that. Cause it's like, you know, do you partner with the Holy Spirit when you're, uh, deciding what clothes to wear, you know, or when you're, <laughs> when you're putting your socks on or brushing your teeth or, you know, when I'm looking for a parking spot at the mall, or is it like, yeah, help, you know, try to help me understand that of, of partnering with the Holy Spirit. And I'm, I'm sure it's a bit of a progression. The deeper you get into relationship with him, the more you seek him. Because at first, sure. it's easier to yeah, see it. sure. the, the toughest things. And then you can choose to become more part of your life. But, yeah. 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 That's a great and really practical question. Again, man, I would just go back to the word. And I would say, what does the word point us to? Right? What, what does, when we look at the Holy Spirit, as he's revealed to us in the word of God, what does the word of God call us to in connection with the Holy Spirit? And what my mind went to, this is just one category, yep. right? Um, in Ephesians 4, Paul is talking about our speech. He says, put away falsehood, speak the truth with your neighbor. Um, goes on, talks about anger stealing. Then he comes back to speech again. He says, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths. Only what's good for building others up as fits the occasion that it might give grace to those who hear. And then he says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. So there's this connection between our words and grieving the Holy Spirit. Yeah. He's like the words that come out of your mouth they can grieve him. They, they actually can like cause his heart pain. And so this is one category that the word of God puts forth that the Holy Spirit says, Hey, I want to partner with you, or rather I want you to partner with me yeah. in bringing forth speech that's undefiled speech. That's pure. Speech that is like what James 3 talks about, 
it's not a mixture of fresh water and salt water. It's not blessing and cursing. It's pure. Yeah. It's undefiled. And our speech is one of those areas just so clear throughout the word of God that the Holy Spirit, he wants to be Lord over our tongues, over our mouths. He wants to rule over the words that come out of our mouths. Mm-hmm. And so, again, that's, that's, and we can spend a whole lot of time just on that. That's one category. I want to, I want to stay here for a yeah. minute. Um, <clears throat> okay. So I have been, I have been praying for a more intimate relationship with really the, the last two years. And, and, and when I need any fasting, the, the focus has mostly been more intimacy with the Holy Spirit. It's good more intimacy yeah. with Jesus. And I've, I've kind of traded back and forth and I was trying to like, I want to seek the Holy Spirit for the, the, the man of the Holy Spirit. And I want to seek Jesus for the man of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this last time through is actually, it was actually yes, yesterday or two days ago. I couldn't, I opened my Bible and I couldn't read it. It was, it was the first time I've ever mm-hmm. encountered this. I couldn't read it. I think I, where was I? I was maybe at the end of Mark and end of Mark four, maybe where, I, I was, I was, yeah, as, as I was getting into this, I was just thinking about the emotions of Jesus. Yeah. And so it's just started. Yeah. I started thinking about yeah. the idea of, 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 of the way we use him mm. for these different things that we've mm. tried to accomplish. Mm-hmm. And, um, the, I, I, I was not a big eighties rock guy, but the, the word cheap trick came to my mind of like, huh. like trying to use Jesus like this cheap trick to get what we want out of yeah. him. And, yeah. and it, it, it hit me. So I was thinking about yeah. that and the emotions of Jesus. It's good. Um, came to me and I, and I, I realized through this, like, wait, I've been praying for the intimacy of the Holy Spirit and no intimacy with Jesus. Why, why wouldn't that include helping me see his perspective and the emotions that yes. he felt yes. as these people used him? I started thinking about yeah. him, you know, the people trying to basically force him to be king. That was something that mm-hmm. always seemed so hard mm-hmm. for me to understand. Like they're trying to force him to be mm-hmm. king. Well, for their own selfish reasons. Yeah. Right? Of course they wanted to be kings. They're ready for yeah. all the, these great promises of when the Messiah comes. Um, and this guy's feeding them and, you know, let's get rid of the Romans and you're going to, you know, make us all prosperous again. Yeah. All right. What's in it for me? Yeah. And, um, and then when Jesus basically says, you know, well, let's put that to a test. You don't, you know, eat of my flesh and my blood, then, you know, you, you can't have this. Yeah. So, so when he basically pushed everyone away because he knew their heart, that, that was kept playing to my mind of the emotions of Jesus. So now to what you're saying here, the one thing that's, you know, that was jumping out so strong in me is when he says the one sin that won't be forgiven when you blaspheme the Holy Spirit. So back to our words can grieve the Holy Spirit. Yeah. yeah. It, it almost feels like Jesus is protective of the Holy Spirit in a way with this about, you know, this idea of don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah, and you, sure. can, you can come at me, but if you, if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, that's a sin that'll never be forgiven. Yeah. So when you're talking about the, the power of the words, that just, that came at me right here. Yeah. Why? Well, I guess, first of all, what does it mean to blaspheme the Holy Spirit? Oh, shit. Let's, let's uh, <laughs> if that's a sin that won't ever be forgiven, let's go ahead and call that off for yeah. what that is and bring yeah. some understanding there. But, but how do our words make that much, you know, what is it about our words that makes such a difference in an impact to the Holy Spirit? Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. Dude, you're <laughs> sure throwing me into the weeds here. Um, man, I, I, I really need to find the passage if I'm going to talk about it. Okay. Um, here we go. Um, okay. I am, l- let me just say, first off, I'm, I, we have nowhere near enough time for comprehensive deep dive over this portion of scripture. Sounds good. And what I'm giving is just, my limited knowledge on this. Okay. Yeah. Um, full disclaimer there, like every disclaimer we have, or yes, financial advice. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's the same here. thing. Same thing. Um, again, how I read, I'm looking at the passage in Mark three, there's another account. Um, but here in Mark, um, specifically what we see, the scribes are looking at Jesus and they're saying, He's possessed by Beelzebub, right? They're basically saying he's possessed by a demon, okay? Yep. They're looking at the incarnate son of God. They're watching him 
heal bodies, open blind eyes, deaf ears, the lame are walking, dead are being raised, and demons are being cast out. And they're saying he's doing that because he himself is possessed by a demon. Um, so then Jesus is like, you guys are idiots. Okay, that, again, that's the Nathan Rickner translation. He yep, says, fair. how can Satan cast out Satan? Right. So he's basically like, this, this is irrational. This is illogical what you guys are saying. Um, and that's the famous statement where he says, that a house divided against itself, it, it can't stand, right? right. Satan's divided, he, he can't stand. So let's see. Right at the very end, <clears throat> he says, this is where this phrase comes in. Truly I say to you, all sins will be forgiven, um, the children of man, and whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. Now, here comes verse 30. Verse 30 says, for they were saying, he has an unclean spirit. So what I understand this passage to be saying, okay, remember the scribes were studied in the word, mm -hmm. the Old Testament specifically. These dudes gave their life to it. Right. So people that should have had more light and understanding than anybody else, right? Right. Jesus comes on the scene and they are calling works that he's doing by the power of the Holy Spirit in his humanity. He operates by the power of the Holy Spirit and they call that work the work of Satan. They attribute it to demonic power. Okay. They say he has an unclean spirit. So blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, as I understand it in this passage, would be for someone who has, you know, they have understanding and the insight that this is clearly something unique happening here. Right. They have enough understanding to know that this is from God, and yet they attribute it to Satan. They call what's of God with, with light, with understanding, right. they call what's of God from Satan. Yeah. So. And it might not I be think, that they're questioning that in their heart. Cause right. You hear a, yeah, if, that's different. If you, that's different. If you listen to Elijah's stream or your other things, you're starting to take in different prophetic words. You're trying right. to understand like this right. is strange to me and all that. How do right. I, right. That's how okay. To check, but they were doing that publicly no. to, to right. diminish Jesus right. for their own selfish intent. Right. So. These were not guys who were like, oh, man, Jesus, tell us more. This is weird. This is strange. We don't understand it. No. Their hearts were hard. They shut him out. Yeah. And they said, you have a demon. I Like, I can't even fathom speaking to the sinless son of God in the flesh and saying, you are possessed by Satan. Yeah. It's so, it is so gross and disgusting and evil. And the deception is so dark. Their hearts are so hardened. They settle in that state and we don't, we don't get any other picture in the gospels that they repent. And that's, that's the other key place. Um, the other key point I should say when it comes to blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, that it's, it's a settled state. It's someone who they've attributed this, the work of God, to Satan, mm -hmm. and they're settled in it. That's good. Right? Yeah. They're, they're completely unrepentant. Yeah. They are completely hardened in their hearts. And that's why it's never going to be forgiven, is because they're not willing to repent. Right. Okay. Thank you for that sidebar. That, yeah, again, that's just a little, yeah. You had a second question, though. I don't know if we have time for it. In the, um, there's something about our words and, you know, why that's so important to the Holy uh, Spirit. Uh, like, yeah, just, Jesus seemed to almost seem protective. And again, not that the Holy Spirit is saying less than Jesus or anything else here, but almost like a, the way a big brother is protective of a little brother. He seemed to be protective <laughs> of the Holy Spirit. Like, you know, you can you can say what you want about me, but don't. 
you know, yeah. don't blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And well, well, again, but they're it's, again, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, we don't want to split hairs. Right. We we come back to the fact that um, you want to look at somebody who is operating. You want to you want to look at partnership with the Holy Spirit. Go look at the life of Jesus. He was fully in partnership, never misstepped with the Father, with the Spirit. Right. Perfect union, like perfectly on assignment with them. And, and he himself said, the Son can do nothing except what the Father shows him. Right. He said it different ways multiple times in John. And so, again, for them to blaspheme the Holy Spirit, to say a work of the Holy Spirit is a work of a demonic spirit, um, they are not just blaspheming the Holy Spirit. They're blaspheming the Son. They're blaspheming the Father because sure. they're, they together are one working in partnership. Yeah. And so it's like an assault on the Holy Spirit, an assault on Jesus. An assault on Jesus is an assault on the Father, right? It's, it's all, it goes together. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, let's so come back into this a little bit more from a practical standpoint of partnering with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, when I'm thinking about this, where, where I've come is I've got into spots where if I'm in a tough situation, I don't, you know, I don't know what all, things are falling apart around me. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, you know, coming back and saying, Holy Spirit, you know, I'm, I'm just giving this to you. Holy Spirit, please help me mm-hmm. with, with this thing. Yeah. 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 Um, if I'm in a uh, in, in a tough conversation, either the one where I sense the emotions are getting high with someone as they're maybe pouring out to me, or even if I'm in a you know if I'm in a heated disagreement with my wife or something like that, and I'm gonna just like I'll just it's like this mental you know, kind of reset that just says just quiet myself for a second, saying Holy Spirit, I give this to you. Yeah, and so that's how I've been trying to part of the Holy that's Spirit, good. and it, the fruit of it's incredible. Yeah, when when I do that, you see the way. Yeah things just all sudden turn and it's so much better than they looked like they were going. Yeah. What do you do from partnering with the Holy Spirit? I love everything you just mentioned. Um, and yet I want to say very strongly that too many, even believers, treat the Holy Spirit as if he's the emergency fire alarm. Yeah. That, oh no, there's a fire in my life. Something's going on. Now I'm going to talk to you, Holy Spirit. Come help me. I'm going to raise my hand. There's another spot where I where I, I'm doing better with that, but no doubt that is me here. Where I, I'm I'm seeking Him more than just that. But in those, but I, I absolutely still I can I can certainly be guilty whether I'm treating Him like the power source or as like I'm handing it over to Him. But either way, yeah, the, the emergency side well, is, is that's real. And again, that's a good thing. I don't want to disparage that. Sure. The Holy Spirit loves to be our helper. That's what Jesus called him in, yeah. in John 15. He's our helper. He loves to help us. It just feels like I've gone an inch deep there and there's a lot more to go. Yeah. Oh. It's it's just that he's, don't confine him to that. Yes. Don't confine him to the stuff's hitting the fan. Let me go talk to him now kind of guy. Right. It's no, again, he, wa- he wants to be friends right. across all of life. Yeah. All that you do. Um, apart from just the crisis and the challenges. And so um, we talked about this a little bit, I think last time, but like the main way I do that, man, it's, it really is really simple. It's daily. I'm in the word. Remember the Holy Spirit authored the word of God. He wrote the word of God. So it's his word. I come to his word and I, Every day before I read it, I ask him, Holy Spirit, speak to me. You know, some iteration of that prayer, mm-hmm. some days shorter, some days longer, but I just say, I, I want to hear your voice. Yeah. And every day I spend time in prayer. I spend time talking to him. And I talk to him first and foremost about the things he wants to talk to me about. It's not just, I, I have my prayer list. I have people I pray for and things in my life that I'm praying for. But primarily, I come to the Word of God and I talk to Him about His Word. Yeah, those are the things He wants to talk to us about. Yeah. So I spend time in prayer. I have a, um, I have 
time every single day that I do apart from, you know, again, challenges that might arise during the day, crisis that might arise. I pull away and just say, I want you. I want friendship. I want intimacy. Right. Yeah. Um, and then throughout the day, like I ask him for help because I want to stay in a spirit of prayer throughout the rest of the day, which I believe is the same thing Jesus talked about in John 15 when he said, abide in me, dwell in me, live in me. It's, it's this spirit of prayer throughout the day where I'm living life with him. I'm, I'm talking with him where he's my all in all. Yeah. He's in all things. All things are for him and to him through him. That's, that's what it's, what it is. Um, very practically though, this is, this is just a little, maybe this will help some people. Um, I have this written in my Bible cause I just love it so much and I could, we could pull it apart and go into it, but I'll just give it to you real quick. Um, sometimes I use this little acrostic, it's called trust. And so that stands for thank you or I start and I just say, thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence in me. Thank you that you're living inside of me. Mm-hmm. Thank you that you're here with me. Thank you for your gifts in my life that you activate. Thank you for the power you bring to my heart to love Jesus and to obey Jesus. Thank you for your work in my life, right? Um, then I go to the R, which I kind of use it really two R's for that one. One is revelation, which is just a fancy word for spiritual understanding. Yep. And then rain. So I ask the Holy Spirit for revelation, for insight that comes from Ephesians 1 17. And then I ask him, I ask him to reign in me. So like my speech, I say, I want you to reign over my speech, yeah. the thoughts of my mind, the motives of my heart, my emotions today, my schedule, my finances and health, my relationships. Lord, I want you to reign over it. I want you to be the Lord over all of it. <laughs> and then I go to the you, which is use me. So I I invite the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I say, Lord, use me to heal the sick. Use me to free those that are demonized. Um, use, you know, my prayers to bring answers and breakthrough. Use me to bring the lost to you, all that kind of stuff. I ask him for his power, for his anointing. The S is strengthen me. And that's talking about, uh, Paul used this phrase a couple of times um, in Ephesians 3. He actually prays that the believers might be strengthened in their, it says some translations, their inner man, their inner being. Right. It's like your spirit being strengthened. And so I ask him, I say, Lord, strengthen me on the inside again to obey Jesus, to love Jesus. Strengthen me to withstand temptation. Um, You know, all the different ways that you might need strength spiritually on the inside. And then the last one is the T, teach me because the Holy Spirit is the greatest teacher. Right. And so I say, Lord, That's teach good. me. And and really practically, because um, I know for many years I came to the word and it, like, it just seems like an ocean that you can't understand. It seems to me more and more like that over the years, but you enjoy it right. more also. Um, and I say, the greatest thing you can do is ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. Be my teacher. Lord, I, I want to understand your word. Um, so teach me. Teach me like we're talking about today. You can ask him, teach me to partner with you. Yeah. Show me what that looks like, Holy Spirit. Because I, you and I can have this conversation. I can give a couple of tools. You know, We can share from the scriptures and from our hearts. But at the end of the day, if you and I and people listening want to learn how to partner with the Holy Spirit, they need to ask him. They need to actually say to him, teach me how to partner with you. Yeah. They need to talk to him and ask him to come be the teacher. So I, you, I grab that little acronym sometime or that little acrostic. Um, and, and I'll just, you know, you, you could go for a number of minutes on, you know, just one of those letters. For right. Sure. Yeah. Um, and I'll also say this, um, though it, you know, people listening, they can think I'm weird for saying this, but it's, you know, it's scriptural. Um, but I have a private prayer language that I use as well. How'd you know that's where I was going? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Um, 
and that to me has honestly, it has become one of the most precious things to me. I, I put it on the shelf for a number of years after I received that gift. Um, but I spend at least half, if not more than my time in prayer every day, praying in my prayer language. When I read the word, as I read it, I'm praying in my prayer language. Um, driving over here in the car, I'm praying in my prayer language with worship music going. Like it's part of the spirit of prayer throughout my day yeah. is that I can be going about other tasks and I can be praying. You know, I'm not loud about it. Right. I'm, it's often under my breath, but it's such a precious gift to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit in that way throughout the day. Basically, if I want to pray in English, I use that little acrostic for trust. Yeah, it's a great, great thing to start relating to the Holy Spirit and who He is and what He does. Um, but then tongues is is honestly the just it's been such a precious gift to me and okay. going deeper in relationship with the Holy Spirit. For time's sake, we needed to cut this one off here. So we are going to pick right back up where we left off uh in our next episode, episode 41, with Nathan Rickner as we continue talking about what it looks like to partner with the Holy Spirit. So Join us again here. Uh, it'll be a couple of weeks from now. Our, our production team's going to take a little time off for Christmas break. So join us here in a couple of weeks as you, we will pick back up with this conversation and Nathan will continue to deliver some really helpful insight into what it looks like to have this relationship with the Holy Spirit. Thank you and God bless. Thank you again for listening to Wealth Well Done. Be sure to subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast player and together we'll continue to improve our relationship with money and our effectiveness in stewarding it well.